What's wait? You guys are talking about glory holes in the live stream chat. What what is going on here? Is this AM Wake Up or Liberty Radio? Anyway. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back on a Friday night. Uh, it is Friday night, February 23rd, 2024. Uh, we are, for some reason, back doing this whole Liberty Radio thing again. Uh, I've been told that people enjoy it. Uh, people have actually reached out to let us know that we enjoy it, or they enjoy it, and we enjoy them uh, enjoying the show. So uh, that's, that's a nice little bit of uh, synergy there. So I guess we'll keep doing it for a while. And uh, of course it's Friday night, so that means we are here to take uh, your calls, as it were, uh, something like that. You let us know what's on your mind and, and we're here to listen because uh, that's part of the public service that we provide here at Liberty Radio. Before we get things started, uh, as far as the phone lines are concerned, that's a button here on the console somewhere that I will hit in just a moment. But earlier this week, if you were tuned in, you might remember that I promised an update on the products that we received here at the studio from Brave Botanicals, uh, John Bush's Kratom CBD and more business. Uh, that you can actually find on the interwebs yourself if uh, you are so inclined to do so and have the requisite skills. Uh, you can find them at mybravebotanicals.com. Uh, but yeah, I promised you guys a report. So uh, I did take notes as I was uh, partaking of the packaging or the packages in the packaging. We need better writers, folks. That's seriously, that's, that's why uh, we really need you to help us out over at manufacturingreality.org forward slash provide hyphen value. I am sick uh, of these crappy ass writers and we need to hire better ones, but we don't have the budget for it. So uh, help us out. So anyway, uh, I started on Monday, uh, which of course was February 19th. And I started by sampling some of the red relaxation with my morning bowl of yogurt. Don't at me, all right? I know how to take care of my body, figure out how to take care of yours. It's probably not the same for both of us. I will say that, well, I'd done a little bit of research beforehand so I would know what to expect, right? And of course, you always wanna do that whenever you're putting something new into your body. Do your research beforehand, you dirty conspiracy theorist. It did taste better than I had expected uh, based upon my own research. Uh, I did, and the relaxation again is for like pain relief, uh, help with sleeping if you're having trouble sleeping. And uh, I did also partake of the Delta 9 THC gummies on Monday as well. I thought, why not? Supposed to be feeling good, right? Might as well feel real good. And I did by about 2 p.m. I ate the yogurt around noon and by 2 p.m. I was, I was good to go. Uh, I was actually so good that day, feeling so good that I was ready to go asleep uh, right at bedtime. But that could have also you know, been the stress. Because, uh, of course, this weekend, I needed a weekend from my weekend. The next day on Tuesday, I took some of the green, and I'm going to butcher this, Mang Da with my yogurt. Uh, and I used a little bit more than the previous day because that's how they say to do it is, you know, work your way up slowly, take a little bit, and then increase it each day. Uh, and it still it didn't taste that bad. It was all right. I did notice the, the bitterness a little bit more with the higher dosage, but it wasn't a deal breaker. Like it wasn't, it, I didn't find it uh, uh, repellent at all. Uh, and the Mayang Da is, to, is for, supposed to be like for stress and anxiety, help ease your nerves, that sort of thing. It definitely took the edge off. I was, I was feeling no stress uh, on Tuesday. 
which was probably a good thing. On Wednesday, I dipped into the third package of Kratom, which is the White Lightning. Again, added it to my yogurt, and that's for an energy boost. And at some point, I don't remember exactly when it was in the day on Wednesday. And of course, Wednesdays being when we do the new music show, right? So typically, uh, I spend a, a fair amount of time doing show prep on a Wednesday. But at some point, I decided that I had to get out of the house and go do something. And I ended up going to one of the local thrift stores and finding uh, a very interesting book. So it was a, a very fortuitous trip out of the house. But that's not normal. I don't typically do that, right? So that means, uh, obviously, I, I felt like I had some energy that I needed to burn off because I don't have a car. Uh, so I walk pretty much everywhere I go. Fortunately, I live in a town that has about 10,000 people in it. So you can literally walk across town in an afternoon. Uh, it's true. Fact check me on that. I dare you. Now, yesterday, because uh, I ran out of yogurt on Wednesday, right? So yesterday, I didn't take any Kratom. Today, I didn't take any Kratom. But yesterday, I did take two of the Delta 9 gummies because that was the advice that had been given to me by friends in the AM Wake Up channel on Monday. And I was like, well, one makes me feel pretty good if I'm going to feel really pretty good. I should probably wait until Thursday. So I did. And uh, yeah, that's why I ended up just like spacing out last night uh, when we didn't have a get fact harder. And uh, we just chilled and listened to music and uh, eventually listened to some Bill Cooper. And I think it was a pretty good night. Uh, your results may vary. Again, if you are scoring along at home. But that was my results so far being a brand new consumer of Kratom. Uh, definitely something I will try again in the future. Matter of fact, I went out to the grocery store and made sure that I was going to have some yogurt for tomorrow. So you'll probably definitely want to tune in for your Saturday night freak out dance party tomorrow night. Uh, but that is my Brave Botanicals report for mybravebotanicals.com for the week ending February 23rd, 2024. I can see that we already have some callers on the line. Uh, caller, where are you at? What you hauling? Talking to Matris. I'm talking to whoever wants to pick up the line. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Great night. Well, I, uh, I'm actually not passed out asleep in the floor tonight, unlike last night. That's a plus. Fuck you, Bob Evans. Fuck you, Bob Evans. Uh -oh. Well, you know, it's not it's not Bob's fault. It's my fault. Well, Bob, I, I wanted Bob's a country dead, fried isn't steak. He? Yeah, Bob but, but he's still alive. Can't but his name be. lives on. His name, His name lives, lives on. on on those beautiful packages of sausages. Well, yeah, it's a golem now. Yeah. He's as alive as Levi Strauss. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe you got some of Bob's actual meat. So Bob's the, actual Bob. That's right. yeah. What's you guys' favorite PSYOP of the week? Hmm. Solar Ooh. flares took down the cell networks. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, I, how are people actually buying this shit? I only I took down AT&T, though. No, the, Verizon was, had uh... problems. T-Mobile had problems. There were outages for both of them. Not, not near uh, the extent of what AT&T experienced, which, again, it's like, okay, so the solar flares were targeting AT&T, apparently, is what was going on, and Verizon and T-Mobile, I guess, were just collateral damage. But you're leaving out the intergalactic aliens that were steering the solar flares. Sure. Excuse Whatever, me. man. Yeah. Like, however you have to make it hold up. Like, it was going after the cell networks, but all the airplanes in the air, the air traffic controllers, that shit was all good. This is clearly a failure of the United States Space Force, and I demand a congressional subcommittee 
open up a fucking investigation. Well, yeah. somehow Eric's our new, our board. new our new moon lander um, landed sideways, according to the diagram. It's oh, yeah. like watching uh, the Simpsons. Ken Went Brockman sideways already, huh? But but yeah. I thought I thought the video feed was fucked up when it was landing and shit. Like, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, I heard there was no video it was, feed. It was the last. Um, so how did they the know last, it was sideways? The, the last people who landed on the moon, they were there taking pictures of the new moon landing. Apparently, <laughs> they're still there. They're still there. Was, it, was that India? Was it India or China? Or no, it was Japan, wasn't it? Didn't Japan, Japan just put a robot on the moon or something? Japan was like, yeah, I guess we did it. You know, everybody else said they did it, so so did we. We're on the moon too. Sure, we are. I I, I <laughs> dare you to get the the Japanese space agency head director there to say lollygag and Laurel Canyon. I don't know. I didn't watch any of the NASA stuff. I just saw all the jokes about it. Well, they it was kind of like a joke, the whole presentation. I mean, did they think anybody was going to take it seriously? Oh, God. We haven't but landed. Have to watch it. That wasn't officially Space Force or NASA that landed on the moon. That was one of our public-private partnerships with some. We haven't landed. We haven't landed there in fifty-one years. Yeah, like, but it must so have now. been in like partnership with NASA or something because I did I did see a video with like a a, a panel and they had they were all decked out in uh, NASA regalia talking about the 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 lander. But I mean, the corporation gets to plant their corporate flag too, right? Right there in the middle of Idaho or wherever they're filming the moon landing. Yeah. Who who was it sponsored by? IBM. <laughs> If he was smart, uh, it was Blue Origin. Sponsored Blue by Blue Origin. Origin. All right, Blue Origin. Dick by Rocket. Amazon. Let's go, right. Elon Musk. Woohoo! No, that's no, Bezos. That's Bezos. Yeah. Bezos. Oh, oh, that Nazi right. motherfucker. Did you know that um, Los Bezos Amorosos, that's loving kisses in, in Spanish? Bezos yeah. means kisses. Bezos means kisses. Yes, Los Bezos means the kisses. Bezos, you Bezos is like, like, like you know how, how growing up, like in like junior high, how we would sign love letters like with the X X O O, right? Kisses and hugs. Well, they say Bezos y abrazos, Bezos y abrazos, which means kisses and hugs. All right. I'll take your word. Not for available it. at Amazon, though, unfortunately. Only available IRL. There you Sorry. Go. Sorry. There's not going to be a package on your door. Speaking of packages, did you see what uh, Rantcast just got in the mail today? No. Nah, what did he get? Got a brand new AM Wake Up trucker hat. Looked nice. I might have to get myself one. It looked that nice. Ooh. And a brand new. Ruby and the Patsy's Liberty Radio T-shirt. Nice, Fuck yeah, yeah, man. I I got the AM Wake Up trucker hat, and it was one size fits all. And apparently, I've got an alien size head, and it doesn't really fit my head. But I got it hanging. One size anyway. fits all, except Rob. You didn't yeah. read the fine print on the tag. It said except Rob. <laughs> Pretty That's much. all right, Rob. I I love your beautiful old neck head. You look like one of those statues in Mexico. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Yara. I appreciate that. You make me want to eat Oaxacan cheese, right? The it's fuck the best down. thing anybody's ever said about my big head. <laughs> you, you know, honestly, people need to respect your qualities of Mexican deity-ness. <clears throat> All right, well, Rob. I'll let you get us started tonight. What's uh, What's on your mind? Where do you want to take us? Um, it's been a, uh, a crazy week in the, uh, cartoon. So I guess it's been a crazy week period inside and outside of the cartoon. Like I was, I was actually messaging Tony. Uh, I think it was like at the beginning of last weekend and I was like, dude, 
What happened to people this week? It's like everybody lost their minds at the exact same time. And he was <laughs> like, no fucking shit. Well, you know, one thing that like kind of stands out to me is that uh, video representation of the bombing of the Palestinians, the uh, video. Um, have you seen that? Where they basically show where they started, told them to move, and bombed where they told them to move, and then oh, yeah, bombed yeah, yeah. them all the way up to the gates of Egypt. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> called shock and awe. Yeah, that's disturbing. It's well, um, you know, Rob, uh, human shields only work if you can cram them all in one corner. You know, the the closer they are, the more effective they are as human shields. It makes sense. Because Israel has a right to protect itself. And I, I wish you could condemn Hamas. I'm sorry. I wish you could condemn <laughs> Hamas a little bit more vigorously to appease my Jewish donors. Well, the uh, 0.2% of uh, Jewish that I am makes me really sympathize with nobody. So uh, when, when you're murdering people, ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that you're wrong. I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, wow, man. That that was pretty epic. Yeah. Makes me want to <laughs> dye my hair red like Rabbi Shmuley. I don't know how these people get up there um knowing, you know, the 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 reality. I know they get up there and they play make believe on TV, but they know mm -hmm. what's really going on. Oh and my god, whenever I hear that's... a shameless IDF spokesman whether it's one of uh, Piers Morgan's friends or one of the people making the rounds in the American lamestream media, like when they start doing their song and dance routine for Israel anymore, it's like, God damn, just go ahead and get the fucking clown flower that squirts fucking water. Get the fucking Uga horn and the floppy ass <laughs> shoes. I mean, God damn, man. How much are they paying you? Have you no shame, sir? Have you no shame? Anyway. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely and ridiculous. I like uh, on, on the, the mothership on Sunday night, like Rich was literally like breaking it down sentence by sentence, like everything that the dude was lying about in real time. And it's like, it, we don't, it, we don't have to work very hard to do this anymore. Yeah. Like it's not the mask. It hasn't just come off. The mask is like thrown away. It got taken by the garbage men two weeks ago. It's in the landfill already. <laughs> like it just, I got, I got to say it's very disconcerting to see Skeletor without the purple hoodie on, you know, could you put a little bit back? I, it's too much information. Skeletor. Really? I don't need to see your, your pectoral ribs. Really? Put uh, a wife beater or tank top or something, please, Skelly. You're scaring me here. And, and the star of David tramp stamp. I should have <laughs> known Skeletor. So when, it's, when, um, when does it, when does it get at least curbed? Right? Cause it's obvious that they're not going to stop. They don't care. They don't care what people think. They're going to keep doing it. They think it's their manifest destiny or whatever the fuck excuse they're using this week. Right? Like, when does yeah. it end? When does it end? Does it end? I, th I think it ends when either A, Israel 911s the United States again, or B, uh, a, sign a sufficient number of Americans come to the realization that Israel already 911 does us as they're dancing and high-fiving on camera. Well, that's fine. And th Document that's, the event. That would be a, uh, a momentous occasion to celebrate, to be sure, if the majority of the American population could come to consensus on that. Absolutely. That does yeah, not why? stop the killing of, I don't want to say innocent people because nobody's innocent, but I mean, come on.
This is literally wholesale slaughter. It's being put, it's being plastered all over primetime television. It's plastered all over social media. Like it's an, it's not just an obvious psychological operation, what they're doing to try and demoralize people. It's just absolutely heinous. Well, like to this me, is the, this is the, the dregs of human behavior. This is the lowest that you can possibly be as a human being. And they are fucking reveling in it and rubbing everybody's faces in it. It's amazing well, you know, how propaganda I've made works, the, right? I've made the comment before that I thought that this was a League of Nations moment for the United Nations as an international body. Um, you know, but it's so much worse than that because in context of Western powers and Western influence, this now exposes once and for all completely um, that the United Nations has no balls and it's only a tool no of empire used to punish poor countries because it has it, so it's, it's meant to punish completely completely incapable of holding any of the western powers to account ever and so we've seen Gosh. one debacle after another whether it's afghanistan or iraq or libya or syria uh now with gaza um you know they're all profiteering off of the war it's not just the United States that's supplying white phosphorus and cluster bombs and other muni munitions for the Israeli Iron Dome and the Israeli military forces. Um, but uh, it's also Canada and England and France. And I mean, it, it's a whole festival of international military contractors cashing in on this, benefiting oh, yeah. their financial benefactors who build the bomb factories who keep the capital yeah. flowing into those ventures rather than you know improving society or infrastructure or other things yeah, now, they're you just know, making they themselves are, wealthier and feel free to jump doing, in whenever you want ashley we'll we'll shut up if you tell us to yeah we're seeing a lot of infrastructure in different corners of the globe just not really much in the United States. Now, there are outliers like uh, Texas, for example. I mean, every time I've ever gone to Dallas, it's like, oh my God, the Dallas North Tollway is now yet another 20 miles further north. And, you know, I mean, eventually North Dallas is going to be like half of southern Oklahoma as well. It's, it's well all the overpasses in Philadelphia on 95 are collapsing, so they're rebuilding them too. <laughs> Are they, the way for them. are they actually like repairing them and rebuilding them or are they just like putting them back together so they'll last another yeah. year? Yeah, they're uh, sending out alerts about the uh, traffic flows in the area. So doing but you got to think, Rob, the, I, the Dwight Eisenhower interstate network was begun in 1958. Most of it was complete by 1972 or 73 like over 80 percent so i mean you know when it comes to these overpasses and underpasses and 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 tunnels and such most of them were built with about a 40 or 50 year lifespan and yeah. so you do the math and yeah. quickly you figure out that like Literally expired every 10 years single ago. fucking bridge on the entire fucking interstate system is already overdue if it's not been replaced in the last 50 years. I mean, it's, it's you know, the number yeah, math is so easy. <laughs> most of the bridges from South Jersey into Philadelphia are like constantly under construction since I was little. They're always, you know, redoing something because that salt water just erodes them. They got to keep redoing, redoing a lot of traffic. I just, I get, I keep getting the feeling that the whole, I mean, obviously not keeping up with the infrastructure serves a multitude of purposes, right? 
or the demoralization probably it, it, yeah like it, i get all of that but still to me it only makes sense from the standpoint of if you know that there may be something that's going to happen soon that you're going to have to repair all of that shit anyway just see if you can ride it out until then. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's the vibe I get from it. Don't forget the 400 pound gorilla in the room when it comes to highway construction or railroad construction or any type of contract construction in the United States, which has got to be inarguably contracting has got to be the most sleazy stinky, filthy, slimy, fucking corrupt business in the entire fucking country. A country that is already absolutely corrupt to the core, but I'm not going to argue with you on that. Whoa, the whoa, juicy, whoa, liquid easy. corruption <laughs> center of this shit apple that we live in is highway contracting. So, you know, when you look at the bridges degrading from you know, saltwater intrusion from weather and such. That doesn't, that it, they they got interstates all through the Alps and they're not mm-hmm. replacing those bridges. They're not having to repave their fucking autobahns in the Alps of Germany every fucking year or two or three or four because they build them correctly. They build them to spec and then it's inspected. When it comes to the United States, the inspectors are bought off. The contractors are bought off. Everybody's making money. Everybody's fucking half-assing. Everybody's cheating on it. The taxpayer's paying for eight inches of dense-grade aggregate underneath the black top. They're only getting four inches. They're paying for six inches of sub-grade uh, bituminous uh, pavement, or black top, as people would call it, and they're only getting about three inches. The, the final coat's supposed to be two inches. They're only getting about an inch and a half. I mean, and so, you know, literally within... Two, three years, it's full of fucking potholes and everything because they've cheated. Literally, they have literally fucking cheated at every level of the road itself, even literally and figuratively. Like, it's supposed to be six, it's only four. It's supposed to be four, it's only it's good. I know this because there, there are independent auditors that go out there with a coring this- machine and they'll core from the surface of the pavement of the interstate all the way down to dirt. And then they'll turn Driz, four I sideways, and they're like, "Aha! That's why this road confessing. is failing in just three years." Confessing I, to what? Driz, yeah. Driz, as as a as a professional surveyor, I'm hoping he's not confessing to something that he's uh, getting bought off to agree to. You know, no, nothing. Yeah, here is, nothing here is on the record, man. This is all just between <laughs> us. <laughs> it, it it's just I, horrifying to see how coordinated every contractor is in making sure that it's completely half-assed. Oh, yeah. And, and the most look disturbing at, look thing at new is... home construction over the course of the 20th century in the United States. You know, you I have a prediction to make. Progressively more expensive homes using progressively cheaper materials and labor. Right. Like, how the fuck does that work? If Within that's 10 not years, a huge fucking grift... It's all particle this is board my, now. This right. is my prediction. Within less than 10 years, the number of bridges collapsing in the United States, the majority of which will be bridges that have been constructed in less than 20 years. I say this because, you know, you may breathe a sigh of relief when a 50 or 60 year old, or in the case of the Ironton Russell bridge uh, crossing the Ohio River just downstream from here. Um, When that was replaced, at the time it was replaced, it was the third oldest bridge still in use on the entire fucking Ohio and Mississippi River basin. Because it was open for traffic in 1902. But they finally retired that old iron bridge and built a new concrete cable stayed bridge and the deck is already kinked in two places. And it's only been open for about two or three years. The other cable stayed bridge on the east side of Huntington, the, the, the East Huntington Parkerville Bridge, that one was open for traffic, I think, in 90, 
94 or 95. So it's about 30 years old, and they keep having to close that bridge to do retrofitting because the cables are unraveling inside the sheath. And yeah, and so, you know. I'm going to assume that's not good. Yeah, and so the the point being, people just don't like to live dangerously anymore. Yeah, the gotcha. sixty and seventy and eighty year old bridges are actually still safer to drive on than the five and ten and fifteen year old bridges, because as time keeps moving forward, the corruption just keeps getting worse. Yeah. The cutting point, because you know, all right, just one specific example, and I'll move on. People talk about the Brooklyn Bridge all the time, which was built by the Roebling family, right? Um, and that bridge went to the highest bidder. Those contracts went to the best wire that could be found to make the suspension cables for the East River Bridge, the, the Brooklyn Bridge by Washington Roebling. And, and then as he got the bends and get, grew ill, his wife, Emily Roebling, actually took over the project and finished the job. Go women. So, When but, was know, the Brooklyn Bridge built? Uh, it was open for traffic in 1883, I think. In fact, oh, okay. so not even 20th century. We're talking 19th century. That's right. Huh. Um, and now, when it comes to building critical infrastructure... And that's, that's the same Brooklyn getting... Bridge that people drive on today, right? That's right. right. Same one, same cables. That now they've you know retrofitted and, and redecked it a couple times and put in new steel uh, reinforced trusses to increase weight limits on the Brooklyn Bridge. But the towers and cables and everything that hold the span over the river are original from 1883. Um, but anyways, you look at it now, and rather than selecting the best contractor or the most competent contractor to build the bridge or the highway, it just goes to the cheapest bid, mm -hmm. to the lowest bidder. The lowest, cheapest bid. Who's going to cut the most corners? On Sounds like a great business model. And, and we'll pay you a bonus cash. if you that, can get it that done is the business even model. faster. Yeah, especially if you're contracting with the government, you always want to come in with the lowest bid because that's going to guarantee that you get the contract. It doesn't right. matter what your fucking bid is. You can spend as much as they will let you spend on the project. You just want to make sure you're the lowest bidder. Well, usually the lowest bidder loses money and ends up going out of business. So um, beware. I mean, it, I mean it as depends, far as I know, you know, the Corpus Bridge is still I, I know a lot of. I know a lot of contractors, and the lowest bid doesn't always get it. I, mean, I, I don't even no, think you're, government you're talking gives about it. like residential stuff. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. government contracts. Even again, the government, the, the doesn't, bid doesn't really fucking matter. Usually, it's um, somebody knows the person who's putting the um, requests out to the public. Um, well, there, the there are for two the, the RFP out to the public, and then you know it's usually somebody who's in tight with whoever it is putting the bid out. There, there are two major bridges being constructed in the United States today. One is over the Detroit River between Ontario, Canada, and Michigan in the United States to replace the Detroit Ambassador Bridge. They're building the Gordie Howe Bridge. Um, and that's a concrete, pre-stressed concrete They're naming it after a hockey bridge. player? Hey. Because half of it's being built by Canada. And so at least the Canadian side will be built correctly. Um, <laughs> um, now, in the case of the other bridge, which right, is I even bigger. I guess that bigger, makes it okay. We're, we're looking at the Interstate 69 Corpus Christi Harbor Bridge to connect Houston, Texas to Corpus Christi, Texas over the Corpus Christi ship channel. And that bridge, uh, I, last I checked, was last Tuesday, and construction is still suspended. And it's been suspended for a number of months. Um, because they said they cheated on the pilings 
under the main suspension towers. Uh, you know, when they said that this is what we're going to build and it's going to have these many pilings and they're going to be this deep and they didn't even put in half as many pilings as they said they were going to. And the towers are already leaning. And they've not even got the bridge deck to the towers. Uh, I mean, from the towers toward the channel, just the approach spans on either side, you know, to get up to the bridge towers. And so, uh, Tex dot, or I'm sorry, Texas Department of Transportation then stepped in and, uh, emergency order in the courts halted all construction and it's been halted ever since. And, um, you know, ho hopefully they finish it, but they may have to tear down what they've already built and start over again. Or I don't know what's going to happen. It's a burning fucking dumpster fire floating uh, next to Padre Island, Texas. Someone. Well, I'm sure um, some diversity training is going to, you know, take precedent over bridge repair on the next round. So don't worry, you're safe. Rob, you're so right. Like, people just don't know how many bigots there are in this world. Exactly. Like, if you're and, in a room with other people, just imagine you're probably all those... around a bigot. This is where I would like to chime in and just say that I diversity is more important than bridge safety. Okay? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm getting ready to fly to Colorado from Philadelphia on Monday. Uh -huh. I'm really hoping that they've employed the most diversity um, that they can. And, uh, See, the doors, your social credit score just went up. Ashley gives me hope that we can actually win the war against hate yeah. speech. Thank yeah, you. I, I, sincerely Thank hope, you Yona. I sincerely hope, Rob, that, that you have a black lesbian trans pilot for the best possible I experience. I wouldn't have it any other way. And I hope your wings stay on your plane. Um. By the way, you know, offline, you guys got any like? Are you saying the pilot drugs? has some control over that, Ashley? What What are we saying here? I'm just saying that I hope the plane stays intact because they haven't been lately. <laughs> well, don't don't worry. If if something goes wrong and it has to make an emergency nose landing, Boeing is the sound that it will make when it hits the ground. Boeing. <laughs> See, that's where they got the name of the airplane company. Boeing, oh, it just bounces right up and lands back on the landing gear. You'll be fine. Look at that hole in Ethiopia. They turned out just fine. Oh, I have to say this before I forget. This is a totally different subject. Can I do that on a Friday night open lines? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So today I was listening to Legal Man and he was going on a rant. And I was thinking that I wanted to suggest to Yona that he sample legal man going on legal one man. of his rants yes and i could i could was just listening to that today and i just was like i've got to tell yona and then i had the chance to tell you today yeah i will definitely see if i can't work in legal man with some some new stuff because now thanks to my buddy dead fella over in um daca shout out bangladesh um he sent me a copy of studio one digital audio workstation because I've just been using audacity all this time, which is it works and it's good, but it's, it's basic. Lee, Lee Gallman's a good dude, but he's um, pretty much a uh, black pill. And oh, he's, so, he's a black pill, but his rants are hilarious. Like he just gets so mad and he rants and I was listening to him today and he's super black pilled, but I was just cackling. I mean, so Something about it wasn't black filled to me. I can't. I can't <laughs> wait to sample. Uh, you can you send me a link to the particular show yeah, you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. So some of his stuff is behind a paywall, but I'll see if this one is available to the public. This oh, was a really a good one. He, yeah, um, because he's, he was uh, going. He's legal man on X. Yeah, legal man. Um, but. This particular episode was really good. He was really ranting because he was so pissed that they were trying to play off Biden's gaffe about the G7 summit and him not getting charged because he's an old man and like he 
Bryn Jean Pierre or whatever her name is, um, her gaslighting people and just like talking in circles. Um, so he was really, and it was he was really on a tirade. So I'm going to see if I can find you that episode, awesome. Yona. Awesome, I, awesome. I can. Well, the, I can the go point out. I was getting at with the Studio One was the fact that before, whenever I would remix somebody like you know the. John Trudell or the Victor Debs or the Howard Zinn, all those older remixes I've done, like with Muhammad Ali and with uh, Thomas Merton, the the Trappist monk, and all these other people. You know, when I went to get a beat with it, I would just have to sample other beats. You know, I I never really made, but maybe three different songs where I built my own house beat from scratch on Audacity. On the other hand, oh, wow. every single song, every single song I've made on Studio One, I've made the beat scratch. So, like, well, it the probably last... has a built-in drum machine, right? Well, it has a function where you can build your own beat, but then you have to download all the sample packs, and that, that's how they get you for the money. Oh, but yeah, 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 that's always been. How I they ain't got to pay for shit because yeah. Dead Fella gets his stuff from the Russians for free. Oh, nice. On open source coding. And yeah. it's funny because like every time I go to download more. There are freeware packs, sites where you can get samples too. Well, yeah, it, it, it's awesome. Cause like when he sends me the different software and then I go to do the downloader and it generates the license key and everything. And then it starts playing this fucking Russian techno. And it's got these little Russian video game characters that are doing the leg kicking dance. You nice. know, that, that Russian leg and I'm like, oh, this is, I'm like, what kind of viruses is dead fella giving to my fucking computer right now? I mean, I, I'm probably going to like open up the, the port on the back and Borsch is going to pull Yona, it out. Yeah, no. Is, is this how you let us know that you're carrying water for Putin now? That's right. Don't seems, force seems the Putin. Do not force the Putin or it'll be more than a fart. Tucker Don't got to you, didn't he? <laughs> Well, the fucking Joe Biden joke, is it like over yet, this motherfucker no. for the last? No, no, as a matter of fact, uh, we will keep Joe Biden, according to Gerald Ford, all right? According to Gerald Ford, this is how it works. He said back in, I think it was like the 1980s, he was talking to some children. I saw it on Twitter today. No lie. He was like, look, this is the only way a woman is ever going to become president. They're going to pick her as a running mate for a man who's going to be elected president. And then that man is going to die while in office and the woman will then become president. I, I'm, I don't know how you can give somebody so much speed and still keep them alive for that many years. I think like he's, he obviously, honestly, I think Joe Biden is already dead. I don't even. I don't know if Joe Biden was even alive in 2020. I don't know if he was alive for the coup or not. I really don't. I wonder the same thing. Or is the is the real Joe Biden off in a bunker somewhere? Shout out Stella. <laughs> no, I think well, the real would, Joe Biden's would, dead. Would they put somebody dead. so? Would they put somebody so fucking incoherent and so lost though? In his place, like when they put think, somebody yeah. who well, seemed the thing, like they right? were like the, with the it. only time that they have referenced his mental faculties so far is when they've needed it to deflect from something that he's done. Right. Otherwise, well, it's like it's not supposed to be a question. So I they're using it that... selectively, which means it's not actually a thing. It's it's yeah. just a uh, MacGuffin that they use. Uh, to honestly, move the. Plot along. the... The, the Disney World animatronic Biden is at this point more lifelike than the actual fucking Biden. Could be. I I don't know. Seems like there's like different versions of him. Um different faces of the oh, same. Oh, you guy. can see it. You can see it the, the earlobes. The fucking earlobes, man. Like but, but I have eyes, all, dude. I see this shit, man. Is, like, it, is it all AI though? <laughs> it might be. Here's the other question that I have. You know, it's AI I when think... all their fingers are bent. You know what I'm saying? That that's when that's a tell. There are different tells. She she knows. Ashley knows. <laughs> well, I think it's part of the demoralization campaign too, right? Like, fuck y'all. Yeah. We did steal the election, and we put a retard who shits his pants, who can't even walk down a flight of stairs, 
in that role. Fuck Abs- you. Absolutely. Because I mean, like they're 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 in the media talking about Donald Trump losing his mental faculties. Like he I mean, me personally, I I know he's a clown and he's a World Wrestling Federation Hall of Famer. So like I never took him seriously anyway, other than the fake opposition. But the whole idea that the media would be like attacking his mental faculties while the whole time when 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 Trump got elected, they immediately were trying to get his cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove him because he wasn't mentally fit for the job. And like this whole time that he, you know, Biden's been president, like anybody who was objective in any way would be like, oh, God, this, you guy's, know what this country needs. Done. We need a new president like Abraham Lincoln one that can kill more American citizens than any other president killed, but with a a sexy black stovetop hat. We need to neuter the federal government and make everybody deal with state governments and, you know, whip them under control. Oh, uh, don't worry. They've already neutered the the state governments and the the federal government. government We're already enjoying good global governance. Uh, That's the thing. It used to be federal federal funds that they kicked out to them to make them do whatever they wanted. Now it's a little more strong arm than that. Remember what I told you before, Rob? America has already been sold. We already have new owners. You've been learning your Chinese. Remember what Yona said? Wang Shang yeah. Ma. Ni Hao Ma just, is good day. <laughs> Wang Shang Ma, I, good evening. Come on. I don't. You I just don't know what I, every time. I don't know whether to learn Mandarin or Cantonese, Yona. You didn't freaking tell me. You, oh, you leave it. Mandarin? You don't want to speak that dirty fucking Shanghai Guangzhou crap? Unless that's you're a, going to gamble in Macau. Fuck that. You want that forbidden city twang. Come on, homie. I probably want both because I probably want to play both sides. Uh, authority just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's people's thing. Well, then you're going to need to learn the traditional Le- script. Don't, don't, don't take the easy out with the simplified script. What, what, are the le- what are the leaders tell us we should do? <laughs> Question. So I, in Grand Theft World last weekend, uh, they were talking about the national debt of Israel. Was that $2 billion or $200 billion? I think it was $200 billion. And who did they owe their money to? Is it also the Chinese to Xi Jinping? I kind of feel like the Rothschilds are really still behind it all. And like Xi yeah. Jinping well, went to yeah, school with course. them and he was like yeah. Yale and all that stuff. So ultimately huh. I don't think it's really China, but you know, you know what I mean. Uh, I think well, ultimately if they were to they owe money to anybody, cards. it would likely be the IMF. Right? Yeah. Because that's that's who's been handing out loans to nations for the last I don't know, 40, 50 years or whatever. I mean, yeah. it's possible that Israel and, and I don't the, the problem is I don't know the history behind the funding of the state of Israel, but it's quite possible that Israel was set up with a completely different funding mechanism from every other country that had ever been up to that point. I could totally believe that. Yeah, yeah. I was I was curious. Oh, sorry, Rob. Go ahead. The uh, the creature from Jekyll Island, G. Edward Griffin's book, talks all about the IMF and how they use the loans to put conditions on the third world countries' governments to keep a certain level of control over the citizenry and uh, pretty much you know live that communist lifestyle. Well, Even yeah, though supposedly bidding, the, the cap- supposedly the capitalists were funding him, but I think that's how all the governments got into place that the U.S., the evil empire has been controlling, you know, for as long as, you know, since World War II was over, at least. Yeah. Well, and one of those conditions is always that you have to have a central bank in your country. And we now have, like, I forget what the number is, like, uh, out of the 190 whatever countries in the world, like 160 of them have central banks or 170 of them, something like that. It's, it's some ridiculous percentage. I, mean, I think that was part of the uh, Robert Seffer's new documentary that was out today when he was talking about that's how Germans got World War I was because they tried to get rid of 
central banks. Is that correct? Somebody uh, check me. Eh. Oh, it seems, it seems a, a, were... reduction, a reductionist view of it. It was, well, it was well, a lot. Germany well, um, came out of World War I, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, wait a minute. Well, Ger- Germany Germany's, was still it, young when World War I started, right? Ger- Germany's and they got blamed and manufacturing. For the the Prussian uh, model of you know factory yeah, yeah. workers and but manufacturing they hadn't been and very build up long, if yeah I but that's what built that's what built up the threat to the Anglo American establishment was their manufacturing and their economy at the time. That's and that's, that's something kind that of I don't what, understand either because the House of Windsor is what is there something cola. Sax Coburg Gotha. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it was much the, better. Yeah, but but they're, they're German. German. Yeah, they're Prussian. Yeah, they 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 were all part of the same family. That's the yeah. thing. They were all cousins. Well, yeah, over. they were all of the royalty of Europe. Were all related to one another. France was related to Germany, to Spain, to Russia, to all of it. They were all interrelated. But it was uh, it was Sax Coburg Gotha that decided, well, we're just going to take out all of our cousins so that we have it all. Yeah, and, and industry gotcha. was ri- rising above the uh, the monarchies. Mm-hmm. So that, that's kind of like the, the, they, the bankers and the industrialists kind of seize the power and kind of shape things. And it's been so that you- way ever since. So you think that they, the royals were from, they were German and yet it was what Germany represented. That's why they wanted to destroy Germany and make them subservient to the Anglo-American establishment. No, I think they wanted to destroy the history of that region. I think that's why they went to war against them. Same reason that we went to war against the Middle East. We were in there destroying as much history as we were spreading democracy. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I think one thing that is critical to keep an eye on, and it's kind of a gaping hole in history. I, I've not heard much spoken about this, but you know, in the United States, <clears throat> the period uh, during and immediately after the American Civil War is known as the Reconstruction. Reconstruction, period. right? Um, and that immediately led to this constant financial turmoil, number of stock crashes and failures of the dollar, uh, which produced the age of the, um, oh, what do we call them now? Philanthropaths. Oh, yeah. The robber barons. (laughs) Out of this, we get, you know, uh, we, we get. You know, a uh, devil Bill Rockefeller's son, John Davison Rockefeller. We get Andrew Carnegie and Horace Greeley and Cornelius Commodore Vanderbilt and all these other fuckers. But um John Jacob Astor. Carnegie. Yeah. At that exact same time in Europe, Italy, you know, uh doesn't become Italy until the Reconstruction period with Garibaldi and the red shirts. Germany doesn't become a country until, you know, so so what was it before? They were smaller sovereign principalities. So, you know, Upper Saxony, Lower Saxony, Bavaria, all these different nations in their own right were just melted into a magic new country. Same thing with Italy, where you had... Veneto or, or or Venice, you know, you had um, Firenze or Florence, you had Genova or Genoa. That these were entire kingdoms and nations. The same with La Sicilia or Sicily, the Kingdom of Two Sicilies, that which was at one time under Napoleonic rule. Uh, the same with Sardinia and Corsica, where where Napoleon's actually from, Ajaccio. But um, you know, then you look at. Again, uh, Yugoslavia was all these smaller countries, and then they were consolidated into Yugoslavia. So this consolidation into super nation states and this super fervor for nationalism 
really was a creation of the Rothschilds and the European bankers, circa 1850 coming forward. And so we've seen how local rule was supplanted by federal rule. And well, yeah. so the state of they figured Saxony, out they could the make state a lot of more Bavaria. money. Yeah, they figured out they could make a lot more money running the same game to a national government that they had been running on the monarchs, right? Mm -hmm. Like the whole war bond scheme. That that's where they made their fortune from is by funding wars. But like I, I bring up this point because we keep discussing World War One and World War Two and these ideas of Germany, the country, Italy, the country. And it's just kind of bizarre because just barely fifty years prior to the twentieth century, to World War One and World War Two, just barely fifty years prior. None of these countries fucking existed ever before. And instead, no. they were amalgamations of they all were, these other smaller countries. The exact but, same thing. There were results of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, Industrial Revolution. You know, the the British did the same thing with China. And, and, and China has continued to do this of absorbing and expanding its empire and taking in all these other languages and peoples. And so, like, Canton used to be separate from China. So did Fujian. So did all. That's why there's such strong dialects and many linguists would argue languages in their own right. Yeah, Biscotti is in the chat, and he said his mother's family lived in Kingdom of Two Sicilies prior to it becoming <clears throat> Italy. Mm-hmm. As did as did my dad's family. My dad's family, uh, in fact, still lives there. Uh, but they, there's been a Salvatore and Zelmo living in Borgio. Uh, the furthest I could find with the local records when I was there in Sicily doing genealogy was about, I think, like thirteen seventy something. It's old enough. I mean, it kept going. It just kept going. And I kept going from book to book to book. And finally, I was like, oh, my God, I'm already, I've already predated 1400. This is enough. I'm kind of bored. I'm ready to go back to the room and smoke more weed. <laughs> I mean, this is because it, it just kept going. Every 20 years, I, here's another one. And you just keep going back. And you just keep going back. And I'm just like, my God. Well, he's, he's Sicilians fuck like rabbits. Yeah, yeah, I mean, every family was well, like. I mean, there's 20, eight so. Yonalings, so. And see, that that runs in my blood. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, they, they had like 20, 24 kids, and then the mother dies in childbirth. So, you know, it's. It, it, I mean, you know, all, all sounds like a games aside. Sounds you know, like a quitter at that point. It's a bit excessive. It's, you know, I mean. 24? That, you know, that's when you're taking your, your Catholicism. Out, you're taking your Catholicism way too seriously. I I mean, you your know. woman isn't a dog, for Christ's sake. 24. Yeah, man. Oh, this, what is this, a puppy mill or something? Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. I know having um, five kids and five kids age five or younger all at the same time is um, it's the most difficult job I've ever had in my entire life. I can imagine. One was That's bad enough. It's the most important work. And then the I two have... youngest are twins. So it's like literally dealing with the screaming, crying Hydra. I love my kids. They're so adorable. <laughs> A Hydra. <laughs> yes. As I compare them to um, Greek demons. But anyway. How old are the twins now? 10, 23, 23. So they are, and today's the Ooh. 23rd. So 10 to 11, 11, 12, 12. Damn. 12, four months. Nailed four it. Four months old. On the day. Four months old, exactly. Wow. So what are your plans? More? No. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Eight is enough. <laughs> so it was true. All right. 
Good to know. And, and, and she, 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 she totally agrees with me because this last round, you know, all the other babies, like they, you know, very quickly after, you know, when they got off the teat and onto the bottle, they would at least sleep for four or five hours at a time from the rip. The twins, I think it's because where they were held back in the hospital for a week and a half. We were told it would only be a day, and a day became two, became four, became a week, became a week and a half, and we were like screaming and hollering. Well, if everything's good, why don't? We, what do we have to do to get the hospital to be convinced that the babies will be safe enough? I mean, can we please adopt right. our own fucking children from the ICU now? I mean, Jesus Christ, it was totally. Un- but nonetheless. Because they were taken by C-section a day before the due date. Why? So they were considered early. Was was the mother's life in danger? She, well, they were checking her for blood stuff like every three days with uh, A1C levels for pre-diabetes or something. I don't know. Gestational diabetes, yeah. Yeah, long story short, when we finally got them home, you know, ever since then, they just, like, are just so clingy and so traumatized when they're in the crib by themselves. Because, I mean, Mm. they were basically just thrown in a fucking shoebox and then had blankets thrown over them for the first. Just, uh, you know, and you're absolutely, I'm completely powerless to do anything. You know, my advice to any young couples that can have children Explore your options for having childbirth mm-hmm. somewhere other than a hospital. You'll thank the Yona. Yona pro tip: Don't have your babies in the hospital. Yona, I thought you, I thought you were going to go with the dolphin therapy in the pool, the dolphins. Anything and, uh, would be better than the hospital and having to beg and plead with total fucking paid weenies I, to be I am, able to spend time with your own child because. When you have a child in the hospital, it's not your child. Nope. Unless they say it is. No, they'll they just take keep it, it. They take it away from you. And if you don't do the things that they want to do to it, oh, then, uh, then you're under suspicion. Whether it's kinda. natural childbirth or C-section, eventually they snatch it up, throw it in a box, wheel it away behind closed doors. Yep. Yeah. It's their baby now. It's not yours. And I don't know how many mothers have been given this C section treatment where you they're know, I, literally I wonder that myself. They're literally pushed out the hospital door within seventy two hours with either stitches or staples from hip to hip, still bleeding, you know. It's because and they not lost just from the-, the uterus, but from the fucking scars and and they're just, just wheeled out in a wheelchair, but the baby's still in the hospital. They like, oh, you can come, back and, you can come back and visit with your baby during these certain hours and put your hands in a glove and then into this hole that will touch it through, the, but you can't. There's no skin. Co- I'm, I'm just like, oh my God. This yeah, is so old- fucking. Well, there has to be so some sort of trauma swap. that's induced so by the C section. Anti human. Right? Like there has to oh, be yeah. a trauma that the, the baby suffers as a result of literally being ripped out of the womb. Well, postpartum depression affects not only the mother, but the infant as well. Uh, and obviously even more so in the case of being thrown into a dark fucking box up on the eighth floor. Of the hospital. You know, I mean, or the sixth. I, she probably I, put the I wrote, nursery on the sixth floor, don't you think? I wrote an entire song called Caesarean Section talking about all of this. Um, and I actually put that with the, the rant cast song, the song I did where, well, it's Tease and rant cast Chris and Steve Poikinen from AM Wake Up in the introduction where... They're talking about the medical system and all these people that died in the hospital and family members weren't even allowed to be with them because they're, well, they're in the COVID unit or whatever bullshit they're saying that you don't, you, you're never allowed to touch them. Or, uh, 
no visitation, and all this just criminal behavior. Absolutely criminal, un unconstitutional, unjustified. And I use that as the lead in to what I call allopathic trilogy, where I've got uh, Dealey Stody or Hospital Walls, and then the song with Dead Fella Essence, which, which actually B1 and RBL are on that too, um, where I rap about, you know, narrative shifted and Biden sniffed it. Um, and then that ends with cesarean section. Hmm. which, you know, is talking about how hospitals have turned their maternity wards into basically puppy mills where they slice the bed. I mean, like, for example, with my first three children, they told me at Springview Hospital, they induce every pregnancy and they just do cesarean. They don't do natural childbirth. I'm like, what? We do it with cesarean. You know, we, we, we figure what time's best to take the baby. Well, what, the baby. what if you don't want to be cut open then you go to a different hospital yeah i wanted yeah. to chime in really quick that um if anybody it's is insane. curious about this topic check out by all people this surprised me but ricky lake has a good documentary that she did called the business of being born and it really covers a lot of what Yona is talking about, like not as in depth as as you sharing your experience, but it talks about the problem with like a lot of times they'll do what Yona said, meaning they'll identify a due date, whether or not that's accurate. Like, how do we know? But so whatever they come up with there, then if you get to this certain point, like your due date or a little bit after, and you're still, you haven't gone into labor, then they want to induce your labor. Then when this is, if you're trying to do it naturally, right. And then when they, they will induce, and then that will obviously speed up your labor. Then they'll give you, um, an epidural, which slows your labor down. And then these two things kind of work together to have a higher rate of emergency cesareans, which is even harder on the mother than a scheduled cesarean. So it talks about that and a lot more, the business of being born. But believe it or not, there are, at least I know from personal experience, when it came to Linville Reynolds and Mark Ackerman, the two uh, attending obstetric uh, and gynecologists, obstetricians and gynecologists there at Springview Hospital when the first three were born. Um, they both, told, as it's the matter of their practice, they do C-section with all. And, <clears throat> you know, if you want to have it natural, drive all the way to Bardstown or a little. Which is how far away? There. An hour or an hour and a half. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because she's in labor. She can make it on the road for another 90 minutes or so. No problem. Might actually even uh, help. Might have the baby on the way and then you save yourself uh, the the bill. You know? It was like it nearly took an act of Congress. Gotta look on the to, bright side, Yona. To get the, I mean, fortunately, my wife had an advocate in her uh OBGYN who saw her throughout the pregnancy and then was there and actually uh did the delivery and she was insistent with him and he had agreed that it would be natural but he was not affiliated with the hospital nor in the hospital's network because the hospital's affiliated with the local university we are Marshall, Marshall University. Um, and so they have their own Marshall Health Network with Marshall Health Network, like uh, what do they call it? The little Instacare, you know, day because uh, you've got like emergency care. And, and anyways, these little mini clinics they put around and they compete with urgent Valley care. Health. Urgent care. Yeah, urgent yeah. care. Yeah. Urgent care. And then there's emergency care. Horrible. And they have two different. And, but then Valley Health competes with them, and that's who... Oh, you have uh, Valley Health? And and her doctor was with oh God, Valley Health. Valley so anyways, Health is atrocious. He goes into the hospital... Valley Health started where I'm from. Oh, that, that's, that's terrible. 
No wonder exactly. why it's so awful. Exactly. Th th now it all makes sense. Yep. That was the missing piece right there. Mm -hmm. So there was literally heated arguments between her doctor and the hospital doctors over them just wanting to do a C-section now. And he's like, no, I'll give her another out. No, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and schedule for a C-section. And he said, well, no, we're going to do a natural child. And, 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 I mean, they literally went back and forth for three hours, and then finally she was wheeled and had natural with the first. Um, but they made sure that didn't happen again, and they took him off of her just weeks before the second birth was coming around because they didn't want him back in the They got him out of the way. Yeah, Valley Health is terrible. Has always but, been I mean, terrible. He, he was a good, he's one of the best doctors around, but, you know, the, just, I mean, the, the thing that blows my mind with the first pregnancy with, with my wife, you know, with Kaya Soda is the fact that he would be my fourth child. Um, and we found out that she was pregnant with Kaya Soda when I was still teaching in uh, Cuenca, Ecuador as an English professor down there. And, you know, we decided that, you know, with Mike Pompeo having just visited with Lennon Moreno, it was time to get the fuck out of Ecuador. And, you know, we wanted to raise the kids around her family, her mom and dad and brothers and sisters and get to know their cousins and everything else and get to know where mom's family and everything grew up. Cause my family is scattered all across the world at this point. And, They've sold every home place that I ever grew up in and cashed in and moved on. And I actually don't really have any regular contact with either of my older two sisters or either of my younger two brothers or my mother. It's really kind of weird, but it's the complete opposite with, with my wife's family. So we decided, well, we'll come back to the United States. But that being the case, since you know you're like eight or six or eight weeks pregnant at this point that they had to use the wand for the ultrasound um the first time but that that gets to the ultrasound so we leave from ecuador we go to europe we're like in spain well her first visit to a doctor was in ecuador and then in sicily and then in the netherlands and then in mexico and then finally in the United States, because Damn. in his um, baby book, you know, every time You're doing we that little, international OBGYN. Yeah. And so like, like when World we made tour. his baby book, his yeah. baby book scrapbook, where we kept all the little ultrasound pictures, she like put stickers and other things from each country. Where the ultrasound go into landmarks and, and taking pictures yeah. and be like, look where you've already been. Um, but what was show it to the kid wild when they're like 10. was uh, you've already every, been you've already been to Germany. You don't have to go back. Every time we went to see the doctor, whether it was Ecuador or Sicily or the Netherlands or Mexico, every single time we walk into the hospital, you know, uh, like in the case of Mexico, you know, uh, mi esposa es embarazada, necesito un otro sonido, un obstétrico. Uh, and they're like, oh, obstetrico, gynecologia, or whatever, up on this floor. So we go on to the ascensor and to the elevator and go up to that floor and get out. Say, My wife's pregnant, needing an ultrasound. Um, and they're like, oh, he's down the hall. What the fuck? So we just literally not two minutes in the building, we're walking into his fucking office. And he's sitting there eating a sandwich. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Here, you can go ahead and lay down. He gets the thing out. And I'm like, literally like 10 minutes later, she's got her pictures and everything. We're like, so where do we pay or anything? It's like, <laughs> pay? He's like, these are your prescriptions. Just go across the street and get your medicine. And I'm like, oh, great. So we go to the pharmacy over there and we hand them. They, they fill all the prescriptions. Uh, and they're like, Okay. Uh, now you'll have to settle your bill. And I'm like, oh, all right. I guess now we'll pay for everything. Yeah, and it, it was, was just like, for your scripts. It was just for the scripts. And yeah. it was like $3 or something for all the prenatal vitamins and three other bottles. 
And all of it total, it was like five different bottles of shit. And it didn't even total three dollars because it was like fifteen pesos, and it was like five pesos to the dollar oh. at the time or something. Anyways, um, <laughs> and, and and you know, I'm, you know, at no time did they ever ask, mm-hmm. "What's your name?" At no time, and in, in none of these other countries, did they ever ask for a photo ID. They never asked for insurance. They just that, that every single time they just ask one question: How can I help? What's wrong? Money had nothing to do with the medical service. Then you get back to the United States, where any type of medical service is strictly a business transaction. Mm. You have to file the paperwork, and you may need pre-approval from your insurance company. You may also need the doctor to get involved to send additional documentation to the insurance company so they will pay the claim. Otherwise, you'll have to pay for it out of pocket on top of the deductibles and the co-pays. What the fuck, man? That's only in the United States. If you're a U.S. citizen with a passport and you go to any other country on earth, you'll get full health care because it's the most basic fucking human right that is constantly denied to every single American by this traitorous, treasonous government. You wouldn't rather have bombs? I mean... (laughs) And, you know, it's like Ashley said, with the clown show... And the fake puppet government. It's as fake and as puppet as Team World America. You know, when it's, you know, they've already let the cat out of the bag. The toothpaste is already out of the tube. Pandora's box is already, oh, we already know about Rex 84. Wait, did you already know about COG? Did you already see the latest report? We already know there's an unelected permanent federal military government the only thing we make is weapons and large machinery that's it <laughs> i mean we're pretty good at it we yeah. sell it for um, billions of dollars to other countries makes, it, makes everything else turn surprisingly yeah we sell but other countries weapons you got to turn your head the other that's way our biggest they business. Go invade the next place with the most resources I mean, they've been trying to take Iran my whole life. How do you all feel about that? That seems you know, to be what concerns there's me some, the most. There's some sort of vendetta uh, against that area. I don't know what it is. Like they yeah, hate Persia. I, they really I, hate Persia. I don't know if it I'm goes back sure to the Greeks or what, but uh, I I think it's more contemporary because the uh, the CIA when they kind of took control of the government they. We're trying to, you know, keep Iran as one of their little colonies, and they tried to put the Shah in place. He got bounced. They put him back in place, and then he got violently overthrown. Um, they captured the hostages, and everything else has been, you know, backdoor dealings and um, quiet contempt. Israel has been trying to like shut down anything they've been doing, bombing them openly. Uh, America has always, like my whole lifetime, it's always been, they've been trying to make Iran a boogeyman, the axis of evil. I, I tell you, the biggest single enemy of the United States government right now is not a Chinaman, nor is it an Iranian. The biggest single enemy of the U.S. government puppet government and actual unelected permanent military government is the American people itself. And that is why you see constant close coordination between Customs and Border Patrol, or I'm sorry, yeah, they're under uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, CBP. Um, Not Liberty Radio, though. We're not a threat to anybody. They don't need to come kicking our door in. Right. I think this current but government can the, go the even point I'm dumber. trying to make is we, we now have receipts of the International Monetary Fund, United Nations um, Relief Works Agency, even working in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Mexico all along the migrant journey, providing prepaid ATM cards, meals, lodging, and everything 
this is a coordinated mass trafficking of cheap labor into the United States, the most exploitable labor pool in the United States, the undocumented worker. Here, you can just come on in. Here's some money. We'll get you set up in a job. Just get to work. Here, here's time. Now, the reason you why and your family <laughs> all these workers are being brought in <laughs> is because they plan to kill us all, and we're just not dying fast enough. So, I guess they're just going to make this civil war happen by hook or by crook. Yeah. I mean, Abraham yeah. Lincoln was a genius. Honest Abe was the best president we ever had because. He found out a way to kill more Americans than any other president. Get them to kill each other. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty was, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ashley. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that the migrants, I've been thinking that they are for, yeah, the military force. So the next time something like lockdowns happen, it'll look a lot more like Australia here than it did last time. And people, yep. and, yep. well, one yeah. quick thing. I just, there's a lot of libertarians that are like on Twitter, for example, and they're, they're, they're talking about the whole, like they're acting like people being upset about this is about the open border thing. But, but it's like, they don't understand the globalist element that mm -hmm. they're being sent here intentionally. So it, it's been driving me a little bit crazy to see people who usually have a really good take, uh, an anarchist, agorist take, whatever you want to say. And yet they don't understand that this is not about borders. This is about the country being diluted with people well, intentionally it is about sent here. They they want the borders to yeah. go away. Yeah, right? yeah, because it's not just us that have been having uh, influxes of migrants, right? It's it's right. Britain, it's Germany, it's yeah. France, it's the Netherlands, Ireland. It's all okay. of the developed Western nations. It's the same strategy across and, the board. And you see. They did the exact same thing beginning in the 1850s in Italy, in Spain, in yeah, France, okay. in Germany, overrunning these different provinces and just mixing the whole thing into one nationalist cure. They want to create to get scarcity. the nationalism project going. And now they've supplanted the nationalism project right. with the good global governance project. Right. And so, you know, like, the, the 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 song I did with uh, Doctor Dennis and Dead Fella called Moloch, where I rap during the chorus. When I made the 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 music video for that, I actually purposefully kept going back and forth between Klaus Schwab and all his rich homies riding the rails on the um, what do you call that up to the ski the ski lift. Or, well, not not the ski lift, but like an actual ski tram on rails, taking them up to the ski resort. And I keep switching back and forth in that video to the actual freight train going across Mexico with, you know, I don't know, 2,400 migrants hanging off the top of the fucking box cars and shit. Half oh, yeah, of them the already missing train. limbs. The beast train. And, and I keep switching back and forth in that video between the... Um, the uh well in that case it's the 54th annual meeting of the uh world economic fund wef um world economic forum with Klaus Schwab. but it's it's these globalists that are now dissolving national boundaries so that there can just be one international panopticon that can be an all-seeing eye that can basically terminate your online existence so that you can't buy anything you well, can't drive anything you can't i mean yeah they're, it they're already trying exists to get in china the, the digital to supplant physical uh, yeah, in mean, terms of um, uh, authority right they want your your digital imprint to actually supersede your your physical imprint on the world in terms of what you are and are not allowed to do with your life. I'm, I'm it, it is sure. total and complete fascist. I mean, if somebody I'm, can make that make sense to me, I'm, I'm all ears. 
I think they're trying to um, create scarcity and pump in a bunch of people competing for the resources and uh, contribute to the breakdown. I mean, the cities are all getting overrun with homeless drug addicts with all kinds of crazy like combinations of cheap drugs that they're pumping in, not even opiates, even <laughs> some kind of zombie right. xylazine bullshit. It's... You know, the, the 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 really crazy thing to me is the fact that there are so many different nations with such large contingents of treasonous traders who are all bought in or bought off, but either way on board mm-hmm. with good global governance and completely dissolving any national sovereign mercenaries. Rights. Those people are mercenaries. Um, and it's just ironic to me because we used to call them privateers. You know, it basically took them from 1850 to 1950 to create all of this nationalism so everyone could wrap themselves in their own national flag. And, and now it's Germany versus Italy rather than Venice versus Munich or Genoa versus Dresden. You know, I mean, uh, now it's, well, you're German and you're Italian wasn't like that before um and now well you're just european and so you know since 1950 to the present day it's been all been about consolidation i mean truth is with free trade agreements you know it's already canamex that america's already been uh absorbed into canada and mexico as a trading unit and when it comes to divestor uh, i'm sorry investor dispute resolution process in the free trade agreements. Um, Corporations can sue sovereign governments for lost potential future profits simply because of different legislations that their people may have democratically passed by referendum or through legislation. I mean, uh, that's the most startling thing to me when I look at the packages that are doled out by the International Monetary Fund and how very bizarre language from a banker saying, well, you have to lower your country's minimum wage and you have to do all these, uh, get rid of these subsidies on heating oil and fuel and stuff. That way you can pay us back this loan faster. Um, It's really, you know, and I mean, when, when, when you talk to just retards and idiots about stuff like this, it, it's, it's... I don't talk I mean, to retards about stuff like this. I don't talk to retards, period, once I figure out that they're a retard. I'm like, oh, you're a retard. I don't have to talk to you anymore. Well, maybe I should be more specific. When you're talking to university professor retards... Oh, um, well... That's you kind worse. of expect more. You kind of expect more, and so, you know, constantly with, with- expect more disappointment. With left-wing propaganda on top of it all. <laughs> Honestly, the dumbest people I ever worked with in my entire life were at a university. Yeah, university system. It's, uh, it's shocking. Whereas the most intelligent people I ever worked with was probably that roofing crew of Mexicans that I used mm-hmm. to translate for. And, and I, I, I did roofing with them, but I mean, I, I could only carry one bundle up the ladder at a time, and they're doing bundle on each espalda you know what i'm saying and yona was there because i mean around here they don't even hard talk english so i had to translate from appalachian to english and back and forth um but no well, problem it's called Se puede sin problemas conjugación de las verbas y todas no problem for the yona uh, <clears throat> y'all want to get weird yeah oh still. you're talking about uh, language there was a uh I don't know if you guys seen it already or heard anybody talking about it already, but there was a new Reese report that came out this week uh, regarding some of the effects. Oh, did I pull it up? It's got to be in there somewhere. Yeah. All right. I got it here. Uh, the jabby jabs. They're, they're, they're showing some new... Um, what do they call them? Well, you kind of may. I, also, he, he describes it. He describes it pretty well. 
here in the video. I'll just I'll let you guys. You know the the official it. term is uh, sequelae. Sequelae. Emotionally, it is easy to dismiss the work of Dr. Anna Maria Mielchia, for it is very disturbing. But her work is shown through scientific testing and backed up by government and NGO documentation. And the evidence shows that humanity has already been infected with cutting-edge surveillance nanotechnology. This is a follow-up to my last report on Dr. Miel Chia's hydrogel research. New research shows that those who receive the COVID shots emit a fluorescent orange glow in their faces that is visible under a UV light of 365 nanometers. And those who have been exposed to shedding emit this glow around their nose. After his wife was coerced into getting the COVID shot, PhD Justin Coy began his own research. He found that the more shots a person received, the more they glowed under UV light. The glow can be seen initially around the nose and over time spreads throughout the entire face and into the neck. After a hot shower, filaments are expelled through the skin of the vaxxed, and these filaments also emit a glow under UV light. These filaments not only glow, but they have been shown to move on their own in spastic movements. And they are also attracted to people. In videos, they can be seen trying to latch onto a finger. And when a person who has received the shot has dry skin, these expelled filaments will become airborne. This could explain how shedding occurs from the vaxxed to the unvaxxed. The Pfizer trial document stated that an unvaxxed individual in close proximity to someone who's been vaxxed can be infected by inhalation and skin contact. In 2008, a biological nanotechnology pesticide designed to kill the brown moth in the state of California was deployed and appears to have included the same sort of fluorescent invisible micro dye that we see in the scientific research. Dr. Hildegard Staninger tested individuals exposed to this nanotech pesticide and found that a glow could be detected in their eyes under UV light. Dr. Staninger called this the Eye of Horus effect due to its similar appearance and claimed it was due to the use of fluorescent thiocyanate in the pesticide which according to the literature would have been used to track the effectiveness of the dispersal. The idea has been around for decades. The Institute for National Security Studies, Non-Lethal Weapons, Terms and References, published in 1997, discusses an invisible infrared dye which is visible under UV light so that rioters can be later identified. Justin Coy points out how the genetic code for luciferase, a bioluminescent enzyme found in nature, is included in the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, along with SV40, which could theoretically allow the luciferase to be written into the genetics of the recipient. Coy proposes that this could be what is causing the vaxxed to glow under UV light. The TRACE Act, HR 6666, COVID-19 Testing, Research, and Contacting Everyone Act was introduced in May of 2020. The bill authorizes the Centers for Disease Control to contact, trace, and monitor the population. In late 2020 and early 2021, people all over the world started noticing purple streetlights, which is the color of UV light. The Quantum Dot Tattoo Research, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, provided a way of detecting whether or not a person was vaccinated by including fluorescent medical information in the vaccines. Invisible near-infrared tattoos that would imprint beneath the skin to later be read by customized smartphones. In the scientific literature on quantum dot research, these fluorescent medical information tattoos have a similar appearance to the faces of those infected by the vax under UV light. You may or may not believe in biblical prophecy, but it seems clear that the ones running this diabolical program are using it as their playbook. From Revelation 13, and the second beast required all people small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark. But never forget, we still have free will. Greg Reese reporting.
Yeah. I wanted to make sure that we got that. Hold on. I wanted to make sure we got that on the record. Because, uh, you know, uh, Rich might be preoccupied with something else that's going on in the world. All, all I got to say at is the moment. Uh, so. Orange, you glad you didn't get that shot. <laughs> no <Wow>. doubt, right? <laughs> Gee. I, I haven't regretted it one moment. I, I immediately picked up on the photophosphorescent ingredient luciferase. Oh, yeah. And I, I've been tracking uh, the good Ralph Barrick since about 2017 when I first saw his uh, published uh, article that he co-wrote with um, uh, Xi Zhang Li of the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Oh, yeah, who, bat woman. Oh, bat, bat lady. Um, and the, all the research was done at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill in 2017. The article published by Nature magazine was um, SARS-like clusters and Chinese bats. Um, and then the second part of it was going into, um, you know, the myocarditis and the heart swelling. Um, that, yeah. well, because that's what it was designed for. You know, it's not a side effect. It was one of the desired results. It's a of feature. The PPP. Feature. Yeah. When you know when they talk about gain of function studies, one of the right. functions they wanted to gain was doing damage to cardio muscle right. or, or right. heart muscle. Leth they call it that's, lethality. Right. And that's right. that's How one of the is it to kill you. That's one of the design four factors for that. And so, you know. World so War III has already begun, and what people don't realize is the battlefield and the and the battle trenches of World War III are not something that can be seen with the naked eye. The well, World, the World actually, War III has already actually, begun, Yuna, and it's being fought on a microscopic level. Well, yes, yes, it body. is, but you can see it with the naked eye because it's all around you. You, yes. you literally cannot escape from the battlefield because you live in it. Yeah, look that up in the sky every day. That is how psycho these people are. They have turned the entire planet into a conflict zone. I just, I kind of feel like we're at the cusp of watching psychopaths run rampant with just having people killed by the tens of thousands and Gaza and Israel's antics in the Gaza Strip are actually just the warm up act. Well, you're on like the third or fourth, fifth generation of these families and um, they just keep degrading and their plan gets dumber and more sloppy and more rushed. And I did I think... kind of gloss over Ukraine. I guess Ukraine was the warm up act for the violence, but I mean, the gaza thing is just on a whole completely different level we've never the, seen genocide live stream the, the people fashion. on a whole the people on a whole in this country really think that ukraine security is really a national security interest for the u.s at this no. point and it seems like overwhelmingly nobody wants to be involved there yeah, um, there's been enough bad press leaking out of Israel where people are questioning I, even that. I really think they want the American people to rise up against the government. I, I mean, it's part think, of the script. Yeah, it's part of the it script, is. right? Like there, there has to be uh, a political movement or uh, an unpopular war in the country that's or that the country's involved in that's so bad that the general population is protesting on the regular against the government. I mean, the next step, thing. and then they the get next to go step start rounding be, people up. Well, that's it. The next step would be, they start trying to um, round up people who have registered guns like that. I imagine would be the last straw. Um, if they're still, if they, if they can't provoke it with, other actions before that. I don't think that you would can go. I don't. That's the thing is, I don't think you can go for the guns directly. 
right? Not the yet. The globalists Not yet. will you take the guns from You haven't from taken the enough players well, off the board with yet. With blue helmets. Well, they're that's, getting, that's a later play. Like They're, they're that, getting that, sloppy and rushed. Sloppy and rushed. You got, you know, evil George Soros and, like, being turned over to his, you know, dysfunctional, half-retarded son who's, um, you know, dating wieners leftovers. So I'll I tell mean, you what, if you things go sharp. terribly wrong, if things go terribly off the rails, they'll just suspend and just outright declare martial law in the oh, United yeah. States. I mean, it's always the Trump card. I was watching um, one of the old uh, manufacturing reality videos that you made a couple of years ago. And uh, I don't even remember. It was some like mayor of a town talking about a curfew that she was putting yeah. into place. Yeah. And, like she couldn't even speak proper English. You know, yeah. <laughs> just like, did somebody really take you fucking seriously? Like, no. How about no? How about fuck you? I mean, look at the debacle <laughs> more recently with um, uh, New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Graham, I think it is. Grisham. Um, Grisham. Uh, yeah. yeah, Michelle like Lujan author. Grisham. Yeah. Um, and uh, and she was openly boasting uh, about, well, yeah, the courts overruled me, so I just changed it to playgrounds and schools and stuff. Yeah. And, and, and Biden and, and just she, said the damn same thing about canceling student debt. It's almost like they're they're reading from the same script. And it, it was amazing because the New Mexico governor was getting pushed back on CNN and MSNBC even. Like it was even a bridge too far for libtards. And, you know, speaking of the term libtard, I, at this point, I would just, the easiest way to define a libtard would be if you've bought into Russiagate 2.0, if you're still suckling at the teat of Mama Hitlery Kankel, then of, of Kanklery or whatever we're going to call that bitch now, then you're total fucking libtard. Because the rest of the country, easily at least 70% of the country or greater, knows that Russia, Russia, Russia is bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Nobody's ever bought that shit. It totally failed. The 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 impeachment hearings, the Adam Schiff Raytheon production with the impeachment hearings in the House and the Senate twice, right, for Trump. Nobody watched it. The in, the insurrection J6 hearings that they had, nobody watched it. And I've even seen, you know, where they were literally scripting it and trying to get more viewers and trying to get more people to buy. Because, you know, the like you said, the mask is totally off and it's been thrown to the side. I mean, the fact that, you know, everything that happens in the House and the Senate is as scripted, if not more so, than the NFL. Because it's all fake. And and if any of them speak up, if any of them step out of line, hey, buddy, we got this Caribbean video here, or we got this, you know, we got these pictures, or, or what, you know, we got they don't the, even you know, need that you anymore. Gotta, they have AI now. They've been doing know. those congressional hearings since COVID, where they get up there and they grandstand and they talk tough, and we're going to, like, hold you social media people accountable for what you did, and, like, Everybody who would like send me those dumb videos is like, yeah, that's what they call political grandstanding. You're not going to see yes. any action come out of it. And they all like fucking feel good. They can go play that in their campaign videos and, you know, perpetuate their Epstein uh, blackmailed fucking existence for another six years or two years, depending on, you know, what office they're in. I just want Pennsylvania, the keystone state, to get it proper recognition. Pennsylvania is home to the Raven Rock Mountain Complex, where our actual ruling government is ensconced, mm -hmm. where our actual leader rules from. So congratulations to Pennsylvania for finally taking back the nation's capital. Originally, our nation's capital was in Philly. It yeah, took, it to took the West, Senator over the John Pope. Fetterman to make that happen, Yona. Right. That's right. What a national I mean, hero. We That's learned right. about treasure, this National bunker. treasure, Rob. The first time they let it slip about the Pennsylvania bunker, 
is when George W. Bush was holding the book My Pet Goat upside, upside down. down. <laughs> apparently reading to these kids at the elementary school in Florida about My Pet Goat when 911 starts happening. Mm-hmm. And they whisper in his ear and he continues reading for what, three or four more minutes and then they're like, yeah, we really got to go now. Uh, and then it comes out over the news. Uh, I think I was watching CBS with um, oh, Dan the CIA Rather. broadcast system. Nice. Um, yeah. I think I was watching CBS with Dan Rather and they announced that power has been transferred to Dick Cheney who is safely in the Pennsylvania bunker hmm. until we can get president back safely. I thought I thought they and said like, what well, 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 the did they just say? That's like the, the other gaffe they bunker. made. They made a couple of gaffes on the day of 911. Another gaffe, I was watching the BBC, and on the BBC, they announced that another building has now collapsed, World Trade Center 7. Oh, and yeah, that before was like, it happened. That was like five minutes before it ever even happened. Yeah. Oops. Well, it's, I mean, they, they were just, they, they were excited, Yona. Come on. How about the wouldn't guy? You the be, guy who wouldn't was, you be excited? You're like, oh. The guy talking to the, the, guy to, talking to the media. We get to do the thing again. I was so excited. I, I ran home on the morning of Die World 1 to my bookshelf where I still had my original issue of Arabic language books from the Defense <laughs> Language Institute for City of Monterey next to Fort Ord, California, where I was taught Arabic by Uncle Sam. And I go to Modern Standard Arabic Language Course. It's got its own DOD publication number on it, down in the lower right-hand corner on the front of the cover. Um, Volume 1, Book 1. And on the cover is an illustration of the two Twin Towers both being struck by airplanes. It was printed, uh, let's see, 393. So it was printed in March of 1993 and it was issued huh. to me in October of 1993. That's interesting. Because the, and broad, it was, so it the was Bill actually Cooper broadcast we listened to last night was from March of 93. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, in other words, you know, I, I, that happens. I then run home. I'm like, oh my God, I, I've seen this image before. And I start going through my books and I'm going through it. And I, and finally, I go all the way to the left side of the bookcase to the first book. And I'm like, shit, there it is. So within about three months, I got rid of all. Of them. I gave them to my Syrian friend who was learning Arabic. And I can get them back. I mean, I know where he lives. I know where they're at on his bookshelf. But I was really freaked out at that point. And then I kind of lost my mind for a while and painted two walls of the basement with this huge mural. Um. Uh, and then I like woke up. That that's one of the times I woke up in a uh mental hospital because my family had put me in a mental hospital. They said I was just completely nuts, and you know, because I was saying crazy stuff like mm. the government killed all those people, and the government's out to kill all of us, and that was just crazy. No, it's crazy talk. Yeah, it's crazy just, talk doesn't make me very popular. Hey, come on! Yeah, on another under, note, come stand under this UV light for a second. I remember how angry I remember how angry people would get when I would tell them, or even like broach the subject that you know it may not be all that they're telling you it is. Uh, I I got you know, know that that's I got to know that's I got one of the angry why, that we get angry. I gotta that, ask that you guys to though. Be why I don't really fuck with my family. You know, being have you know they put me in mental hospital well, yeah so that's understandable times. that is 100 yeah. percent understandable yeah look my my family spent my entire life trying to convince me that i was crazy and there was a certain point where i was like i don't have to listen to you people anymore i don't have to interact with you i don't have to talk to you i don't have to see you i don't have to be anywhere close to you so i don't do any of those things well, but they're not laughing any. They're not laughing at me anymore. Let's just say it now. <laughs> good, but I. It, it, I it's kind of wild, what, you know. I have the, to know the, what the, you guys think about this. All right, <laughs> these these people that will now glow orange under a UV light, allegedly, because I haven't I haven't attempted the experiment on anybody yet. But you better believe I'm gonna uh, if I find the right UV light. 
Knowing what I know now, what, what are these? People? I will never ever read a tramp stamp the same again. <laughs> From now on, when I go to read a tramp stamp, gonna be hitting that shit with a black light. If I oh, see yeah. any orange color in that tramp stamp body tat, kicking that ass. To what the curb. have they done to these people? Because um, they lied about know. everything the whole way. Like, Wait, everything how long that the, they said that the shot wasn't going to do, it did. How long are the repercussions going to be, you know, extending out? Like, they I know so many people. They appear to be permanent. I know so many people who are, like, sick every other month or every month from some bug that's going around, apparently. All these people who got just, like, the basic first two, maybe a booster, and then stopped. Like, not people. I, I don't know anybody who's still doing it. <laughs> that I'm aware of. Oh my God. There's two young kids working at the Chick-fil-A. I say young kids cause I'm about to turn 50 years old and these have got to be like 18, 19, 20 year old fucking kids. Like you can just not even completely grown to height yet. Like they're just kids. And like one of them has got this like, crazy fucking MRSA that just in, you know, since all this began has just exploded and now they've got the twitch and just all these things going wrong and so moved, the, you know, they moved them over to the, the fry baskets off of the cashier counter, you know, just really sad and then there's two girls that work there that are both like, one of them's now just permanently got one arm in a sling and oh. and like it's just from the shots but they would never say that you know it, wow. it's just it's just so fucking sad and then you know of course going into the mall into the huntington mall to get stuff you know it's actually a really busy bustling mall and it's just wild like i haven't seen anyone my age or younger wearing a mask hmm. but there's about 10 15 percent of everyone in the mall today was wearing a mask and that was boomers boomers yeah. Yeah, raised on wrong. black and white 1950s propaganda movies i mean there's something about well, that then, narrator voice and yeah. the well, moon landings the and the atomic bomb test wearing a that, mask they, they I couldn't believe just, it. They, they just can't. They just don't see the movie magic. I mean, for me, it's like you know, when I go back and watch the old Godzilla movies I used to watch, you know, when I was a kid, and you know, the seventies and the eighties. <laughs> I'm so old, and like, you can see the wires and shit in some of these shots, and I mean, it's just so fake. But when I was a kid, it seemed fucking real and but now you can't unsee it but it's the same thing with these truths that we've learned now which has now forced me to go back and re-examine things that i'd always thought were true before and then to see that oh my god this thing this entire thing is fake going all the way back to george washington you know um the exploitation of North America when it comes to La Conquista and how England took over the exploitation of North America itself, it's always been about finding cheaper labor. The entire history of America is always about trying to find other people to work harder to make me richer. And whatever I can do to get rich at other people's expense. Mm -hmm. And we're going to foster this satanic sacrifice on a daily basis where everyone equates everything to a monetary value, where everything is about the love of money. And we'll call the place literally what Columbus exclaimed when he first stepped on the beach. Ame, rica, two fucking words in Spanish. A M E, 
R-I-C-A, love money. For the love of money, por America. America, literally, love money. The literal fucking root of all goddamn evil. Oh, you can't get health care unless you got money. Oh, you can't do this unless you got money. Oh, you can't do that. What the fuck does money have to do with anything? Money is just a way so that a few people can artificially hoard so much wealth and resources, generations worth of resources, so as to starve and kill the rest of the planet and everything on it. I mean, it's just the most unbrazen, Sounds shameless pretty evil fucking me. evil we've ever seen. Yeah. But that's the way it's always been. Seems that's that way. the way. It, I mean, whether it was the Wampanoag and Squanto, or uh, Matoaka, or Pocahontas, whatever you want to call her, daughter of Wehun Sanaka of the Pouts and Confederation, and Jenna Kamaka that they renamed Virginia. You know, it's been nothing but surreptitious, complete fucking evil, led by some Satan worshiping. Kid fucking motherfuckers, because all the initial accounts by the Taino, by the Lucaya, by the Calusa, by the Seminole, by the Lumbees, the Gullah Geechis, all of them, as the slave ships arrived, constant fucking rapes centered on the kids, not even the women. I mean, these have literally been kid fucking devil worshiping assholes from day one since they stepped foot here. The most mm. core concept to La Conquista is the concept in La Mente, in, in, in the mind, I'm sorry, pardon the Spanish, in the mind, the mindset of ownership. That as a man, you own the land. You own your wife. You own your children. You own your slave. Everything will take your last name you own life itself not only your life but the lives of everything around you all of which will take your last name it's all about ownership rather than the cherokee matriarchy where it's all about belonging it's it's like oh, own it oh, oh, being owned versus belonging it's like the complete fucking opposite because in the Cherokee mindset, a husband doesn't own his wife and children. A father belongs to his children and his wife. You don't have rights that are given to you by a dictator that through his benevolence and whims, <laughs> you have responsibilities that you fulfill. And if leaders don't fulfill those responsibilities, they're gone. I mean, there there was a whole scale, uh, there was a wholesale revolution all across the Cherokee Nation where we purged an entire ruling clan of hereditary noble elites, the Anikatani. Around, I think it was around seven fifty five or so, long time ago. Um, still talk about. It. Because, you know, fuck that. It must have left fuck an world. impression. Um, and, you know, that's why, for example. It's been like 1,500 years, man. Damn. Y'all hold why, a grudge. That's why, for example, it is, it is incredibly insulting. Whenever someone claims ancestry from a Cherokee princess, that they are descended from Cherokee royalty because... We killed every last drop of royal blood that claimed royalty, you know, over a thousand fucking years ago. So what you're saying is impossible. And two, proves that you're lying. And three, demonstrates you're so ignorant that you would say something as to be so completely insulting to the entire nation. Right? as to say that you're descended from Cherokee royalty or Cherokee nobility. That, that That's one of the most repulsive things to the Cherokee nation. So much so, purged an entire fucking clan 
that was doing that. And what led to the purge was when they began kid fucking. Pedophilia was a bridge too far. Well, I think it was uh, Idaho, uh, I believe, just passed some new uh, punishment for uh, convicted pedophiles, up to and including uh, death, which I say is a good start, and, and hopefully it's the start of a trend. 10 out of 10. You know... To me, probably the least discussed members of the lower caste are the non-citizens that make up such a large portion of the American population. I, I, let me specify it when I say I'm glad you said that for the last four minutes of the show. Non-citizens would be children because children in the United States have no rights. The United States refuses to become a signatory to the UN International Declaration of the Rights of the Child. It's the only country left on earth that refuses to sign. Every other country has signed that, even Israel. Um, because children are property in the United States. Mm -hmm. They don't have any rights unless they're legally emancipated by a court. And even after turning 18, their parents can come back in and just take over their lives again. Britney Spears, you know be put under a conservatorship um and and that that became a big thing and then there was this whole campaign of you know free britney from her father jamie spears's fucked up conservatorship you know and so this idea of ownership of getting to own and manage other people's lives is central and it's it's a core axis of the american way being able to control the lives of your wives and children long, I mean, for the rest of your life. I mean, it's, I, I can only imagine the horror stories out there of people that have really just been completely chewed up by this heartless fucking system led, championed, and still directed by uh, devil worshiping kid fuckers. Anyway, that's all I got. That's pretty much it, anyway. I mean, really. I mean, when you boil it all down, yeah. Or, or as Richard Grove says on my latest remix with Tupac Shakur, it's all the same people, people. It's all the same group of people, people. But, but I can't, I can't, I'm, not, I'm really not doing Richard's um, Kermit voice <laughs> proper. I'm just, I, I can't good. do it. I can't yeah. do it. But I was able to get a sample from the drizzle, and so, um, and I've been listening yeah, it's to that in the song sound library like, somewhere. I managed uh, to locate it. As soon as I get done with this broadcast, I've been waiting to finish that song because, like, I was in a flurry the other day. I ended up making four or five songs in like three hours. Some of them are still like half, could just not even like one. I was I was literally remixing Godzilla with, which Godzilla is by uh, Blue Oyster, Oyster Cult. Cult. Yeah, um, but Blue I was Manchu did a version as well. Yeah, and was I was quite mixing good. that with uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive and with um, Electric Light Orchestra ELO. Oh so man, that is the perfect cliffhanger. Yeah, and so ELO, B, B, T, O, V, O, C. Bam. Bam. Yeah, so it's midnight on the East Coast. That means uh, we are free to go. We're off the air, folks.